Here guys, listen to this. That's metal. Today, let's talk about this 23 millimeter 1.4 Viltrox lens. I honestly thought I was about to drop it. Okay, lights, camera, and action. What is up guys, Sean here, and full disclosure before we get started, Viltrox did send me this lens as a review unit, but the thoughts expressed here are my own. Viltrox had no input on the making of this video. Also, if you're new here, remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can get more videos like this one. And if you're returning because you're already subscribed, well then, thanks for coming back. So I have a question for you. What makes a good lens? Well, there's build quality, optics, and price. But before I dive into this video in full, Here's a quick summary of what to expect. Okay, so there's that. You don't have to watch the rest of the video, but I really want you to, because I wanna talk about the difference between a $300 lens and a $3,000 lens. And I also want you to see what you're gonna be able to create with a lens like this. All right, so I was sent this lens about a month or so ago, and I've been shooting with it since about this lens. It has a 1.4 non-clickable aperture ring, which can be bumped when you're using it. A little annoying. It has autofocus, which works pretty good most of the time. And it's built like a tank. In fact, the very first thing I noticed about this lens was the build quality. I don't think there's any plastic on here other than the lens cap. Even the hood, listen to this. That's metal. The hood on this lens is metal. I really don't have anything negative to say about the build quality when it comes to this lens, other than it's not weather sealed and it doesn't have built-in image stabilization. But keep in mind, this lens is also under $400. And if you're getting the Sony E-mount version, it's under 300 bucks. It's made for cropped censored cameras, any APS-C camera. But that doesn't mean that you cannot use it on a full frame camera. You can just remember it's going to be cropped. So if you're a Sony guy, it's really made for the A6600 series, 6500, 6000, or any other APS-C camera. So you know my feelings on the build quality, but let's talk about the optics now. What's the image quality like? So based on my use cases, the best place for this camera to sit in terms of f-stop wise is between four and 11. That doesn't mean that you can't use it at 1.4. You definitely can. It's just that you're gonna get chromatic aberration in your images around the edges, which is purple or green fringing. And you're also gonna be getting some vignetting, but all that is really fixable in post anyways. All right, I'm gonna stop talking for just a minute and let you review some of the images that I took with this lens. The specs for each picture will be located at the bottom of the screen. Also, these are completely unedited. These are taken straight from lens, sensor, to computer. You'll notice that the bokeh on these images is actually pretty damn good. Not perfect, but good for sure. For the images that I was taking that have good depth of field, you'll notice that the background almost has like an oil painting type vibe to them. Also, the other thing to keep in mind when you're shooting with this 23 millimeter lens is in order to capture bokeh, you need to be pretty close to your subject. If you're standing far away and there's a good distance between you and your subject, you're not gonna get that bokeh effect that you're looking for. Ideally, you wanna be about a foot or two away from your subject and you wanna be shooting as wide open as you can be. Also, because I'm a film guy, if you're wondering what vlogging will be like with this lens, check out this video. So if you're vlogging, this is gonna give you a good idea of with my arm being extended all the way out, this is gonna be what you get with this 23 millimeter lens. Not bad. Also, I did test autofocus, and here's what that looked like. So all in all, for under 300 bucks, if you own a Sony camera, you can own a 23 millimeter 1.4 lens. Think about that for a sec. And if I'm being honest, this is definitely gonna be a lens that I'm gonna carry around in my camera bag. Cause I do see myself using this pretty often. So is this a lens that you should purchase? Is it worth your hard earned bucks? 300 or $400, depending on what kind of camera you're using. As long as you realize what kind of lens you're getting. You're not getting a $3,000 lens at 400 or 300 bucks. 
you're getting a 300 auto lens that shoots like a thousand dollar lens. Plus, if you know your way around editing photos and video, it's definitely gonna get the job done for you. So thumbs up on build quality and price. And honestly, the optics are not that bad either. Okay, so special thanks to Viltrox for allowing me to test this lens for a month. I appreciate you guys sending it and like just allowing me to say whatever I want. That's pretty ballsy of you. So what are your thoughts about this 23 millimeter lens? Do you already own one? Or are you considering purchasing one? Do you have any questions about this one? Drop a comment below and let me know. If you stuck around till the end of this video, then I appreciate you. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.